I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker, Jian Ni, who is an associate professor of marketing at Johns Hopkins University, and he also holds the uh, a joint appointment at the uh, uh, econ department, economics department there. So he received his PhD in the Carnegie Mellon University, and then he's, uh, he's, uh, he's known as an expert in the data-driven marketing and particularly empirical modeler. He his research interest is very diverse, and he has uh, several very important paper in uh, uh, healthcare marketing and financial service marketing and uh, te new technology. So today he's going to share his new work about the uh, uh, crowdfunding and how how, how the, the, the information affect the entrepreneurs their their decision making. So welcome, Jian. Thank you. Thanks, Ji Wong. Uh, <laughs> thanks for a great opportunity to be here and to share some of my uh, recent research with all of you guys. Um, this is joint work with uh, Yan Xu from Hong Kong Poly U. Um, the stuff we are going to talk about, uh, maybe many of you guys uh, might be um, familiar with uh, nowadays, so-called crowdfunding market, and how this type of uh, what we call the like, reward-based uh, crowdfunding market uh, facilitate, or potentially can facilitate uh, the innovations um, or what we uh, like um, entrepreneurship. Okay. So we focus on the so-called like uh, how the asymmetric information between the entrepreneurs and the platform and also like potential contributors and how will this uh, impact the, the final product launch uh, in the marketplace. So uh, I guess uh, again I'm, I don't need to motivate that much the importance of the so-called crowdfunding market even though many big companies maybe like but for especially like the so-called small entrepreneurs um, this type of crowdfunding market attract lots of attention so there's of course there's some success in terms of the first example here this the so-called best self companies they talk about they use this crowdfunding to raise the funders so they've successfully launched a product and it become a hit in the market etc um, of course, uh, on the flip side, uh, on the other side, there's some people talking about, oh, this is uh, something not for me, uh, even though the guy raised money, um, but uh, end up not launching anything in the product market. So essentially, uh, his potential investor didn't uh, uh, convert into anything. There's no sort of kind of market. So we want to to kind of understand, uh, okay, what potentially could lead the entrepreneurs not to, um, I mean, uh, convert the successful raised money into like the product. Uh, that's the kind of so why and what's going on here. So essentially, I mean, from the entrepreneur's perspective, or even like in the uh, within company innovations, uh, they might have like the different skills and also in terms of experience level. And they raise the fund through the so-called crowdfunding market um, by, first of all, I mean, for a particular category we are going to focus on, I mean, the company maybe many of us are familiar with, like a Kickstarter, I mean, the particular category we focus on the so-called Indian game category. Uh, so there is the fund through, uh, like uh, setting the menu price, essentially like that if you contribute the $5 after I um, launch the product, you can get the product. Uh, uh, or like you contribute the $10, so you can get the product, plus uh, maybe your name is shown in some like uh, one of the characters into the game, etc. This is what we call the, like a menu uh, price and the pledge options. Uh, and essentially, um, through this crowdfunding stage, the entrepreneurs, they can observe the potential demand. That's what we call like a pre-selling demand response. And how this type of pre-selling demand response impact their final product launch decisions. So entrepreneurs, they may fail to complete the, uh, the new idea regime fail to launch. That's the kind of, I mean, of course, the reason behind that, you see what we call like uh, information asymmetry could potentially be like, uh, um, they observe the signals from the pre-selling demand response, and they also have like, private information uh, about their own intention in completing uh, this new idea uh, experimentation. So that leads to um, 
our research question in terms of, okay, so are the, first of all, are the entrepreneurs' decisions on completing a new product launch influenced by what we call the like, demand side, the pre-selling demand uh, during the crowdfunding stage? So essentially that means even before they have a product, so they can observe some potential demand response through this crowdfunding stage. Right, so this, I mean, uh, in the so-called pre-internet stage, this is unimaginable, right? So even before you have a product, you can somehow have some indications in terms of how the product uh, market will respond to your product, right? So secondly, we want to understand uh, what type of like entrepreneurs are more likely to internalize the demand response information, and, and also, um, does this kind of differ in terms of what we call the experience versus inexperienced entrepreneurs? And how, the, of course, we want to uh, help the crowdfunding platforms to devise and also like facilitate the um, better policy in terms of the entrepreneurship uh, in a sense. So the empirical strategy is uh, um, the following. Uh, we obtained the data. Uh, we, uh, in the video game category from Kickstarter, we have the complete the crowdfunding campaign data uh, from, uh, I will talk more about the data between like 2009 and 2017. And we use uh, some like uh, machine learning type of things to document the crowdfunding product attributes. Uh, so essentially, uh, we have a very detailed product attributes. And also, we intentionally cho choose this particular character in a sense, uh, we want the focus in terms of uh, the entrepreneurs that they learn about the demand response, not just in terms of the attributes of the product. So essentially, we want to minimize in terms of people's uncertainty about the attributes, but more in terms of uncertainty about the potential market response. <clears throat> Uh, we also document the very detailed information in terms of the fundraiser skill, in terms of game design, and the experience on this particular, uh, particular platform. Uh, then we collect the information um, through uh, some website, uh, I will talk about this in a minute, uh, the post-crowdfunding product launch and or fail information. So essentially we have, uh, after they successfully raised the amount from the uh, Kickstarter, and whether the product was launched or not. <coughs> So uh, the model is, I mean, I, I want to get into the model, but like uh, two uh, stage. First of all, we focus on the crowdfunding stage, and then like a post crowdfunding stage, uh, like the model fundraisers, uh, whether they decide to launch the product or not. <coughs> so here are like, some preliminary findings. Uh, essentially, like a pre-launch demand response have a significant influence in terms of entrepreneurs' uh, uh, decisions. Uh, and our results suggest that like a positive response can increase the product launch rate by 30 to 55%. So this is huge in our opinion. So essentially, okay, even though, I mean, uh, the, you don't have a product, but through the contribution in the crowdfunding stage, uh, and entrepreneurs uh, internalize this demand response information and take this into account their decision in terms of whether they are going to launch the product, and this has a huge impact in terms of whether they decide to launch the product. Uh, secondly, not everyone is the same uh, for understandable reasons. More experienced entrepreneurs are more likely to internalize this uh, in the so-called pre-selling demand, and I will show you a graph in a minute. Of course, in, uh, the careful design in terms of uh, platform policy, for example, in terms of restrict uh, the price options, or like uh, maybe tech, like uh, you need to pay in terms of less the least more options versus less options, will also have a very important implications in terms of uh, like uh, giving what kind of signals obtained by those entrepreneurs, therefore in terms of related uh, their future product launch decisions. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, this is obviously a link to a bunch of literature in terms of entrepreneurship, the most relevant one, and also like a sailor learning, and of course, in recent years, the crowdfunding and entrepreneurial moral hazard become uh, also like an important uh, topic. <laughs> So yeah, here is an illustrative example so for people who are familiar with the Kickstarter. This look, might look familiar. This is essentially uh, the typical like uh, kick 
uh, Kickstarter fundraising campaign look like? This is what we call like many options. Pledge $3, $15, $20, $25. Uh, and you get a certain type of things. So this is what we call the attributes. This is what we call the like menu uh, options. So essentially, uh, how the contributors, the potential investors respond to low surprise menus. This is what we call the pre-selling demand. And essentially, the entrepreneurs, uh, they use the so-called pre-selling demand to internalize, uh, um, make the decisions in terms of whether they are going to launch a product. And also, we have the detailed information in terms of the sales for each price options. This is what we call, the, uh, as we will talk about this. Anyway. Then uh, we know whether this product is launched a lot. I will show you in a minute uh, where we get this information. So essentially, for this particular categories, uh, we have the information from the so-called website like Steam, and also uh, Google and Apple platforms. So then we can sort of kind of figure out whether the product launched or not. OK, first of all, let's look at the uh, data. So essentially, uh, the, first, the most important data for us is uh, whether uh, the product is launched or not. So essentially, we got all the campaign data launched in the Kickstarter between uh, 2009 and 2017. And we merged this information um, on the final product launch. And the way we define the launch versus the fail is by the following criteria. First of all, I mean, if there is no like, a video game URM from like, Steam or like, from Google Play, from Apple, this is one indication, OK, even though this guy raised the money, but end up nothing come out. OK, that's right. But in order to sort of kind of further to make sure this is the case, we also check, OK, for example, let's say, after the fund uh, campaign ends, whether there's any discussions, updates from the fundraiser. Because sometimes it may be, yes, after a certain time period, they might may not sort of kind of finish the product uh, on time, but later on, they might maybe like three months or two months later. So we want to make sure, OK, this is the case. We make sure if there is no like update, update uh, from the fundraiser after the campaign period. And also, we check in terms of uh, some like uh, um, uh, platform forum in terms of the discussion, uh, the, uh, complaints about uh, the um, uh, entrepreneurs. So essentially, we through these three uh, criteria, so we try to kind of be a little bit exotic in terms of defining whether the product, yes, they didn't uh, come out with anything. OK. Uh, secondly, how to measure the entrepreneurs' uh, skills and uh, experience. So essentially, the way we uh, by the relatively working experience in this industry, and we do see like experience, uh, and also we, uh, the way we measure the experience on the platform is through like the previous project launch uh, for given fundraisers. Uh, we can see, I mean, for uh, here the distribution in terms of uh, uh, experienced uh, entrepreneurs versus uh, like non-experienced entrepreneurs, uh, the variation in terms of their professional skills and also the experience in this uh, platform uh, market. So. So then we sort of kind of show in terms of uh, this is what we call like a menu price. Remember, like a bunch of, and uh, essentially uh, we show um, there's some difference in terms of both uh, what we call a successful launch. I mean, we call it a not scam versus a scam. We do see, uh, for example, uh, for most of like the non scam uh, project, interestingly, they don't have. They have relatively fewer what we call the extreme options, price options. So essentially, Accenti, I mean, if you just uh, intuitively think they might so they can, okay, try to pretend they're normal to, to some extent, even though this is a very loose uh, definition. Uh, here are some uh, some statistics. As we can see, uh, the fulfilled project actually they have a relatively small funding goals uh, comparing to the successful. Uh, and also, the total amount of uh, money raised also is kind of uh, uh, vary quite a bit. And also, uh, spend the more days uh, uh, on average, they, um, they raise the rest, uh, relatively a few money, uh, less, less money comparing to the successful launch um, product. <clears throat> also, in terms of experience level, we can uh, see the uh, difference uh, as well. 
So we, we first of all, we want to so kind of show, okay, whether there is some like impact in terms of, uh, so first of all, we do see, like we regress, let's say, like the sales, the, what we call the pre-launch demand response, and, and also the other, uh, like whether the product launch or not on a bunch of uh, um, factors, for example, the sales, and also the funding goal, and also the ratio of the uh, raise the fund versus the goal. And we do see, for example, the sales does have a positive relation, creation uh, with whether the product is finally launched or not. So essentially, yes, uh, how much sales does have the impact in terms of whether the entrepreneurs decide whether they are going to launch the product or not. Interestingly, the money, the funding goal uh, <laughs> is not significant. Uh, is, is, is negative, I mean, negative creation. So essentially, I mean, somehow, I mean, originally, when we started this, we saw that, okay, maybe some of those people, they didn't uh, convert the product successfully. It's because they didn't set the right funding goal. In a sense, maybe they need $5,000 to launch the product. But they just said, okay, I'm going to raise 3000 But when they really work on that, they found the $3,000 is not enough. So they end up not uh, launching product. But at least from like regression, it seems not the case. Essentially, this uh, seems to suggest that the funding goal is not, post I mean, is negatively created with where a product. <laughs> and also the ratio of uh, uh, the, so how much the kind of uh, the money you actually raised versus uh, your funding goal is also uh, negatively, really is also, again, is not significant as well. <clears throat> so neither of uh, them is significant. <clears throat> so um, by recognizing this factor, so we potentially kind of internalize this, so we build a very sterile, again, I'm not getting into the detail <laughs> in that, uh, this uh, kind of like crowdfunding stage, Essentially, uh, those uh, potential contributors derive the utility uh, from like uh, what we call like a uh, uh, match value, essentially uh, uh, whether this product is for me or not to a large extent. And by uh, uh, controlling a bunch of the factors, the price, the attributes, and also like the number of collaborators, a bunch of the characteristics uh, of, the mark, uh, of the product. Uh, product. Uh, so then, uh, in a so the so-called post-crowdfunding stage, uh, so the fundraisers, uh, they decide whether they are going to launch the product based on the experience, uh, skills, and more important, very importantly, the demand response we see in the market. So essentially, okay, so this is, uh, I mean, based on my current uh, experience and the potential like future response from this uh, demand response. So then they make the decision whether they are going to, uh, um, okay. here are some of the results from like crowdfunding. I'm not going to get into the detail uh, of this. Essentially, it uh, looks like it's, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing I want to show you, and this is uh, important for us, essentially we do see there's a large variation in terms of pre-selling demand response. So essentially, how contributors, they respond in the so-called crowdfunding stage really varies a lot. And this, uh, the, this sort of kind of serve as a signals for the um, entrepreneurs to make the decisions where they are going to uh, launch the product or not. So here we can see like the uh, signal has a positive impact and also like the, uh, for people who have a different experience, this signal uh, um, also uh, has a, a, dif a differentiated impact in terms of that. Uh, and also uh, the duration and also uh, ha and how long the um, campaign lasts will also have the impact, etc. Uh, so Based on this, I mean, Ted already mentioned the so-called, this is what we call like structural models. So based on this structural model uh, estimator, we can conduct the counterfactuals. Uh, the first set of the counterfactuals we run is, okay, what if we uh, change the demand response, like signals? So we can see, we uh, draw pictures uh, for two sets of uh, like people versus 
have a low skill versus like high skill, like experience versus inexperience. Uh, and we do see having what we call the like the, uh, uh, the not so promising uh, skill, uh, signals. So essentially, okay, what if this signal is very uh, uh, pathmatic versus the signal is, is very optimistic from the crowdfunding stage? And how will this impact the entrepreneur's decision of whether they are going to launch the product or not? And we do see, uh, first of all, in both uh, groups, they vary a lot. And also, we can see the high skills, actually, they can better internalize uh, this information uh, reflected by the difference between the uh, probability of whether they are going to uh, launch the product or not at the end. And also, we um, use some like other counterfactuals. For example, we restrict the pledge option in a sense. For example, let's say um, a typical um, Kickstarter campaign is, so let's say, four options as we can see, like $3, $5, $15, $20. What if we, let's say, we restrict that everyone only has one option? And how will this influence uh, their final product launch decisions? Uh, further, we also, let's say, if you need to pay the price in order to have the option. And, and also, we, uh, upon, uh, on top of that, uh, we also say, let's say, original like the price is uh, let's say five dollars let's say uh, for a product but what we i mean because you're early investors somehow we think about this kind of return investment uh, we can provide like a four dollars however at the beginning i charge you five dollars after the product is successfully launched you get a one dollar discount uh, it's like a 20 percent discount so essentially Somehow, like a risk sharing between like a platform and also the entrepreneurs, and how will this impact the, uh, the entrepreneurs' behavior? So, in conclusion, we uh, find the entrepreneurs' their launch decision are significantly influenced by what we call the pre-selling demand response. How the crowdfunding stage will really have an important uh, impact in terms of whether they are going to launch the product. And we do see the experienced entrepreneurs are more likely to internalize the information uh, from this uh, so-called pre-selling demand response. Uh, further, with uh, prop policies in terms of restricting the options, in terms of paying the price, and also in terms of having a more promising um, signals uh, crowdfunding platforms can facilitate the, the entrepreneurship by encouraging uh, entrepreneurs to complete their project. So therefore, they can test the uh, product, final product in the final market. I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes? The product number. The, product, well, the, the sale. The units. Yeah. The units. Yeah, the units. Um, so one of the things that I kind of noticed is mm -hmm. that like, there's a lot more found way to compare to the low goals. It's like for the ones that have low goals, they always like surpass their goal. Um, and so that those are the ones that like, fail to launch. So if if that So that's also the reason why promote, uh, I mean, we want to uh, try to, what if we restrict the options the entrepreneurs can set? How will this impact their decisions in terms of where they are going to? Yeah, uh, so essentially, I mean, the average, essentially you're talking about in terms of, okay, the sales may not evenly distribute between different options, right? And how will this impact in terms of the total amount of money? On one hand, as we can see, like for example, like the ones successfully, they are more likely to involve some extreme options, right? So that means, like let's say, those like successful projects, they might involve some like big numbers. 
right? So to that extent, somehow count what you suggested. Yeah, so essentially you're talking about in terms of the, how the money will distribute between the different options, how will this impact? That's, I mean, that's one thing we really I mean, try to figure out through these like demand the signals, right? Of course, uh, uh, further uh, question might be, okay, whether this one signal is sufficient enough to categorize, okay, the distribution, or maybe we should use more dimension characteristic or like the uh, uh, sufficient statistic to summarize this information. Yeah, that's that's something we, we also like, try to explore. So when, when this is like applying to marketers, like they're doing like product testing, mm -hmm. like testing different prices, is there like a way for them Well, for this particular market, where like the product attributes are more mature, like uh, in terms of like both like the uh, buyers and the entrepreneurs in this game categories, they are more familiar with this. So to that extent, uh, yes, having uh, to encourage uh, the potential contributors <laughs> to actively participate to more reflect the actual market response might really help. So essentially, that means that we really need to do, do like more representative. I mean. Like market research in, in that sense, and also how we can uh, differentiate uh, between experience versus inexperience. One, we can talk about more uh, afterwards. I guess my time is running out. Thank you.